Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. Well today I wanted to show you some more about the ashed tinder technique. And it doesn't have to be solar ignited, it can be spent BIC ignited, it can be um, utilized with small embers and coals, all that's left out of a campfire. Any weak ignition, ignition source, this is the way to go ahead and get some flames established. All right. There's certain shapes of these bottles for the solar ignition that works better than others. And I can't tell you how many hours I've spent trying to make bottles of this shape work. And you'll eventually find the right angle to get a hot enough focal point to ignite char cloth. Same thing with this one. You'll eventually find that angle to where you got a good hot focal point. But using this shape bottle like I've already got two videos showing you the smart water bottle this is an ideal shape and like a if you remember I told you tilt it towards the Sun so we're using this convex area here and the it's the magnification is coming across this arc and that convex edge through the water down to about right here so that makes a very hot focal point. It's still not as hot as like a Fresnel lens, but um, it's hot enough to go ahead and ignite some ash tinder. Now I've got other videos and I'll go ahead and post those showing you how long it takes to like ball up some grass and use the Fresnel lens and how long it takes to build up enough ember to where you can blow on it and get ignition. It takes a long time. We're going to put ashes on it this morning on these three tenders, the grass, the pine needles, and some fabric. And I want to show you how fast you can uh, build your ember up. So let's go ahead and put some ash on the terry material, an old, uh, an old towel. And we just have regular ashes. Nothing special about the ashes, just what comes out of the wood stove. And don't really need that much. Let me put some back. And just saturate it real good. What I was thinking about doing with this one was to go ahead and get my ember started and get it established real well and then just set this off to the side. I think that it'll maintain and sit there and smolder without going out while I do the straw and the pine needles and then we'll come back to the fabric one. So, let me get it saturated in there really well. So oh, something like that should ignite and build to an ember very easily. And here's some grass. And we'll go ahead and I always like to take the bottoms off of the grass. Lay that to the side. And then we'll take the rest of it. And yeah, make a little bird's nest out of it. I think I'll take this. I think I'll use this to get my initial ignition. This is what we'll saturate with the ashes. So we'll make a nest out of this. This I want to ball up and put ashes on. So we're good on that. <laughs> I 
Now, let's try the pine needles. It looks like they all disappeared. I guess they came through to the other side. All right. Now, that's ready to go. And we're going to tilt it towards the sun and find the hottest part of that focal point on my finger first. That ain't smoking much, but that ember is spreading already. It's spreading really fast. Cotton fabric will not maintain an ember like that unless you have ashes on it it will go right back out. Especially with as little a focal point as we had exposed to it. Alright, let's see what the inside looks like. Yeah. So let's set that off to the side and see if we can work on the other two and then come back to this smoldering one. Alright, let's try this one here is the grass and all that furriness is the is the seed head find it on your finger first I got a bug on my neck. Hold on. Let's try it again. Might be a mistake to use to use this that has all those furry seed heads on it. <sighs> Bees. There's a little bit of smoke finally. You couldn't do that if the ashes wasn't on there. You'd have to build up a lot bigger amber. That's something you don't want to hear coming out of your tender bundle sizzling because you know there's moisture in it.
but it'll ignite. There it goes. Now, are we going to run out of amber here? Let's go ahead and try these pine needles. Hopefully it won't burn up. If it burns up, we'll make another one. No big deal. Finally, a little bit of smoke. A little bit of breeze is helping out. I'm going to get out of this smoke. Let's set this down right here. Oh, I forgot to put my grass stems in there. Now, I'm out of the smoke. I say that I was out of smoke. All right. Oh, we let it, we let it burn out, but that's not a big deal. Let's cut another one. Let's cut another one. We can probably use the ashes that was that was made by that right there. I wouldn't be surprised. Plus that extra dark color is probably probably an advantage too. Let's try that. A little bit of smoke. Boy, it really, it really spreads fast through that, through the um, weave on the terry cloth. Once you finally get it started, it really spreads out. So. Pretty good technique. I'm probably not doing the the best job at, at showing you how great it is. But you can do things now that you never could before. You can turn the weakest sparks, embers, and coals into the flames now, whereas you couldn't do that before, before you was impregnating with ashes. All right, y'all. Just wanted to show it to you one more time. It's amazing. Ashed tender is amazing.
I appreciate you joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.